Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at a special case. Again, we have a set of three linear equations with three variables x1, x2, and x3. If there's a unique solution, eventually we'll be able to take the augmented matrix, which is created by taking the coefficients of the three variables and then having the constants on the other side, the equal sign over here as the augmented part of the matrix. And if it's indeed, if there is indeed a unique solution, we should be able to make this matrix look like this, where we can see that x1, x2, and x3 have specific values that make it unique. So what we're going to do is try to make this look like that. Since we have a 1 here in the upper left corner, we're going to try and eliminate these two numbers right here, those two elements. We can do that by taking the second row and replacing it by the negative of this number, multiply times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the second row. And we take the third row and replace it with the negative of this number, multiplied times the first row, the one with the one in it, and adding it to the third row. When we do that, we get the following matrix. The first row doesn't change, one, one, two, and this is still one. Now the second row, we have negative two times one added to two, that becomes zero. Negative two times one is negative two, added to negative three, and negative one is negative three. Negative two times two is negative four, added to one, which is a negative three. And negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2 added to 2 gives me a 0. Doing the same for the third row, we have negative 4 times 1 added to 4, which is 0. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 added to 1 gives me a negative 3. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 added to 5 gives me a negative 3. And negative 4 times 1 added to 4 gives me a 0. Here you can right away see that we have a problem. Notice that th two rows are identical, hmm. which means that we can make zeros out of one and leave the other identical row there. But let me show you how that's derived. First of all, we're going to take the second row and turn this into a one, which means we're going to divide the second row, R2, is going to become minus one third times R2. Simply divide the second row by negative three. When we do that, the second row becomes this. The first row doesn't change, 1, 1, 2, and 1. The third row doesn't change, or actually, you know, what I could do is I can change both of them if you want. So you could say, okay, R, that makes it a little bit easier. R3 can become negative 1 third times R3. So when you do that, the second row becomes 0, 1, 1, 0. The third row becomes 0, 1, 1, 0. And finally, to show you that we don't have a unique solution, we're going to try and eliminate this right here by taking the third row and replacing it by the negative of that number multiply times the second row the one with the one in it and let's see here and um, adding it to the third row and at the same time we want to get rid of this as well so we can take the first row and replace it by the negative of the second row the one with the one in it and adding it to the first row let's see what we end up with when we do that the row that doesn't change is the second row, so this becomes 0, 1, 1, 0. The first row, we had a 1 there. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 times 2 is 1. Negative 1 times this plus that gives you still a 1. Now the third row, negative 1 times this gives us a 0. Negative 1 times this gives us a 0. And negative 1 times this gives us a 0. Notice that it's as far as we can go. We have ones across the diagonal here, but we don't have a one there, so we cannot get rid of this one over here. Ultimately, what this is telling us is that x1 plus x3 is equal to one, and x2 plus x3 is equal to zero. And of course, we have zero equals zero, which doesn't give us any information. Notice we still have three unknowns, x1, x2, and x3 with only two equations. Two equations, three unknowns, we can then conclude that there is no unique solution. In other words, there's an infinite number of solutions because for every value for x3, we can come up with a solution for x1 and x2, but x3 can be anything, so therefore there's no unique solution. There's what we call an infinite number of solutions. And that's 
the first special case. In the next video, we'll show you what the next special case looks like.